with your sombrero. The green goes, it flows. Yes, the cockatoy. Kill Agnes with a glance from the pupil of a noise. A mic stored in underwear drawers of my dresser. Rhymes from true guide, yours is child of Melissa. A lowercase G hanging under the bar. My G's above and beyond and shining bright from afar like North Star. Guided me to Gibson the Ninja, Dr. Stranger. Like Blase Fly bringing danger. In fair force of Harmonico Six. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stevens All Baseball Show here on Spirit.com. My name is Stephen Hughes. The second show coming back, and let's go straight to it. Uh, some headlines that will be brought up today. Just recently, the Ma- Major League Baseball has released the suspensions of eight players co- and coaches from the Diamondbacks Dodgers Brawl. We'll get to that in just a second. Troy Tulowitzki, one of among the three Rocky stars, injured and possibly heading to the DL. San Francisco's Brian Stowe, an emotional return home after two years in the hospital and rehabilitation rehab centers after his unfortunate beating at Dodger Stadium in 2011. We'll get to that later on today. And to wrap things up, MLB standings to look at who's up and who's down in the American League and National League. So let's start, folks. Is is Stevens All Baseball Show here? On Spreaker.com affiliation, National Sports Radio Station. Let's start with yesterday, the game of the day. The 18-game just marathon. There's been, honestly, five games in the last two weeks that have gone more than just 11, 12 innings. It's gone to 16, 17, 18, 20 innings in the, in the minds of Marlins and Mets fans. But in a stadium today, uh, yesterday... The Yankees and the A's, Yankees were looking for something big. They were looking for a win to avoid the sweep of the Oakland Athletics, who have been red hot, who have already won 40 games heading into this game. But it started off slow for the A's as in the first inning, Robinson Cano hit a two-run shot. And unfortunately, those are the two only two runs the Yankees will score all game. Uh, the A's will score two in the third, and then it will go 14 scoreless innings. 14 from the 4th to the 17th inning, it was absolutely scoreless. But in the bottom of the 18th, so the bases little Mayan Rivera, who will not be credited for the loss, gives up a broken bat single. And pretty much that, pretty much that. Freeman, the first baseman, who just, just jammed, pretty much, does the job, gets it done. Who came in for Brandon Moss uh, earlier in the game, gets the job done, and is the hero in the 18 inning marathon as the A's improved to 41 and 27 and the Yankees go down to 37 and 29 the A's the A's they're two games above uh, they're two games um you know ahead of first uh, in first place of Texas we'll get to the standings at the end of the show but the A's are red hot they're 7-3 in their last time, we'll get to more of those stats as the show goes on. Uh, some notable stats from Yankees and A's players for the Yankees: uh, Robinson Cano went three for six with his two home, uh, with his two run shot in the first. That was all the Yankees had on the offensive side. Mark Teixeira, 0 for five, unfortunately, with two walks and three strikeouts. He had the old hat trick. A lot of players in the Yankees got the hat trick and strikeouts. Teixeira, Travis Havner, Kevin Euclid, and Vernon Wells were victims of the old hat trick of strikeouts. Ichiro Suzuki went three for seven, uh, and Chris Stewart went one for six. Uh, for the A's, looking at Seth Smith, three for eight. Nice day there. He drove in a run. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Freeman, the first baseman, one for two with an RBI. And then uh, Derek Norris, catcher for the A's, went, one, uh, for, went over seven, but he did drive in one of the three runs for the A's. Also, uh, Coco Crisp, the old, uh, he actually pinch hit and it came into the game for Chris Young. He won two for two today, so a nice offensive performance there for a not 100% physically Coco Crisp, who obviously did not show today because of an injury Chris Young replaced him but he went 0 for 4. So that was the game of the day yesterday in my opinion. A great game out there in Oakland. Um looking at the time and uh, how long it went. It went 5 hours and 35 minutes a long long game over there in Oakland and just it's, it's, it's been like a rhythm here. Like, there's a lot of teams that have been going extra names. Uh, yesterday, the Cubs and the Reds game went 14. Uh, Orioles and Red Sox game went 13 innings. Uh, a lot more extra inning games for some reason. But, you know, 
we'll get more information and more, you know, numbers that rely from ESPN. We'll get more of those little in-depth uh, stats as the days heading to the All-Star break go on. So let's go to what we're going to see today in Major League Baseball. Uh, start of the the, uh, the the second game of a four-game series at the beginning of a new three-game series. In the American League, we have the Red Sox and the Orioles uh, continuing their four-game series. Nationals and the Indians, a little interleague action in Cleveland. Will, they'll get started there. Royals and Rays over the Trop. Blue Jays and Rangers. Detroit Tigers and uh, Minnesota Twins. And the White Sox and the Astros playing at Minute Maid Park. The Yankees and the Angels starting a new series there. Yankees continuing their West Coast trip over heading from Oakland to Anaheim. And the Mariners, they will be going to Oakland where the Oakland A's are looking to continue their hot streak as the A's are 21-10 at home. Let's go to the NL Paul Parks. A nice series over in Atlanta. Giants and Braves, two of the best teams in the National League of the Giants, not really showing themselves as they're tied for second now with a Rockies team that's now been injured a lot. We'll get to that and more with Troy to the Whiskey, Cargo, and Dexter Fowler. Dodgers and Pirates starting a new series. Over in Pittsburgh, and um, Dodgers Pirates, uh, Dodgers looking to begin a new series with some suspended players. We'll get to that in just a second. Brewers and Reds, Cubs and Mets, Cardinals and Marlins, Phillies and Rockies, and Diamondbacks starting a new series against the Padres, who got in another brawl with the Dodgers earlier in the season in April. So let's begin with the suspensions. Ten game suspension for Ian Kennedy. That, that pretty much translates to two missed starts. Um, ten games suspension is a little bit radical. They should just say two games, two starts missed because Ian Kennedy is going to be a starter. Five days rest, five times two starts equals ten games. So think about it there. Eric Hinsky is going to be missing five games. Kirk Gibson is going to be missing one. On the Dodgers side, J.P. Howell, Skip Schumacher, and hitting coach Mark McGuire will be missing two games, and then Ronald uh, Ronald Belsario reliever and then hey uh, then manager Don Mattingly will be missing one game so pretty much everything escalated and I think only uh, the Major League Baseball really did a good job in suspension especially from Ian Kennedy obviously uh, first the hit towards uh, Yon- uh, Yonzel Pugue was a little bit radical him in the nose but I don't think that was intentional that was just overthrowing uh, laying the arm drag and uh, you know leaving a pitch very high up there. I think he did the same thing with, um, you know, Zach Greinke, who was not suspended. But um, I think he was more the conservative guy. Obviously, he didn't want to give him another scrum like this one again because in the first scrum with the Padres, he broke his collarbone, missing a good month or so of baseball. And, um, you know, and, but you had to see Mark McGuire and Matt Williams, the third base coach for the Diamondbacks, really go at it. Uh, just one hand just grabbing each other and, you know, you can. That's pretty much the, one of the main highlight pictures that you would see from this fight. Uh, McGuire and Williams really going at it for some reason. Um, J.P. Howell and infielder Skip Schumacher spins suspended two games a piece for a- aggressive actions, and then Mark McGuire for his conduct with Matt Williams. Howell and Schumacher told reporters in Pittsburgh Friday that they will appeal their suspensions. Um, uh, baseball of uh, MLB senior vice president Joe Agrigolia uh, Jr. cited that Kennedy uh, intentionally threw the pitch at Greinke after a warning had been issued on Tuesday night Hinsky for leaving the dugout in aggressive actions. Manley was suspended for his conduct and gives him what, for Kennedy's actions following a warning. And all they were fined also as were Greinke. Uh, Greinke was fined. Dodgers outfield Yanziel Puke, uh, Arizona catcher Miguel Montero. And Diamondbacks outfielder Geraldo Parra are suspended. MLB fined the Dodgers for allowing players on the disabled list to leave the dugout and enter the MLB, and, 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 ugh, enter the field during a brawl. It will be also banned disabled list players on the Dodgers and Diamondbacks from sitting on, in their dugouts through Sunday. So really aggressive actions that Major League Baseball has been doing, especially with the numerous amount of players on the disabled list for the Dodgers being able to, you know, have an advantage for the Dodgers in this brawl. Manley was to serve his penalty during Friday night series opener at Pittsburgh today and gets him during Arizona's game against San Diego today. McGuire was to miss Friday and Saturday games. The players appeal their penalties will hold off until after hearings and decisions. Everything 
everything really circulated after uh, Kennedy hit Pew with a pitch that fight off his back, uh, off the back of his nose in the sixth. And then Granky, uh, Granky hit Montero, and then Kennedy hit Granky, and then everything rose from there. Uh, some news in Philadelphia. GM, uh, the GM for the Phillies said that uh, Cliff Lee said on Thursday that he was a frustrated player who wouldn't mind trying to win somewhere else other than Philadelphia. General manager responded fr Friday saying he had no desire to trade Lee or fellow pitchers Cole Hamels or Jonathan Pavlov for that matter. Ruben Aramar Jr. said the Phillies have no desire to trade Lee, Hamels, and Pavlov pretty much. Amaro said that just an adam uh, was just as adamant that it was illogical for the Phillies to consider trading Pavlov. The 32-year-old closer is in the second year of a four-year $50 million deal that could take a vesting option for 2016. This is what Amaro said. People would like us to improve our club, but at what cost? You have to replace, you have replacement pieces if you're going to trade someone like that. And we don't have a guy who I consider a closer in our club other than Pavlov. He's the best we got and one of the best in baseball, if not the best. I believe you are. You have to have a closer to win and have success, and I believe in having a true closer, not a closer in, by committee, a guy who stops the game when you're supposed to win late. We don't have a replacement to do that, and I don't see any closer on the market who would be anywhere near as good as Pavlov. I just don't see it. So if you want to win, why would we want to trade a guy like that? End quote. Amaral's remarks came one day after Lee and the offensively challenged Phillies barely won a 3-2 game in, at Target Field in Minnesota, despite out hitting the Twins 16-3. Afterward, Lee danced around for multiple questions in the media about whether he wanted to stay in Philadelphia. Here's how a portion of, the, of that Q&A went, according to CSMPhilly.com. Uh, the question, in quote, if it doesn't turn around, what do you want to stay? In quote, the answer, I definitely want to win. There's no doubt about that. I want to win. I don't know how to say it besides that. I want to win. And another question, if it doesn't turn around, are you prepared to stay here for two months and play out the string? And the answer was, I don't have any control over that. I know that I want to win. And I'll voice to whoever, and that's that. I want to win here. That's why I signed here, and that's where my focus is. And this is another quote from Ruben Amaro Jr. If we, uh, if we have those guys at the top of our rotation, we're a better club. It starts and ends with pitching, as far as I'm concerned. So the more quality pitching you have, the better chance you have to build around that to win. End quote. Amaro, whose team is uh, three games under 500 at 32 and 35, and seven and a half games out of first place from the Atlanta Braves in the National League East, went on to say that even if the Phillies do, don't play their way into contention over the next month, he wants to build around Lee to Hamels, not trade them. So the Phillies, a little bit of a uh, little bit of discussion, a little bit of rumors out here, but it seems like Amaro does not want to do anything with his players uh let's take a commercial break when we come back we'll talk about troy to the whiskey and his injury a broken rib and how long he'll be out and how much of an impact it will make for the rockies in the nl west with the giants creeping up with them for second place you're watching and listening you're listening to seems all baseball show here on speaker.com in affiliation with the national sports radio station <laughs> Welcome back to Seaman's All Baseball Show here on Spreaker.com. Let's continue on. Let's go straight to Colorado where Troy Tulisky broke his rib diving for a ball to attempt a double play and is now out for four to six weeks. Team spokesman Nick Pure said MRI Thursday revealed a right rib fracture. And um, Troy Tulisky told the Denver Post in a text that he was in a lot of pain and was upset after working so hard to come back from an injury play 2012 season. 
Tua Ski underwent season ending groin surgery last June, and the Rockies stumbled through a franchise versus 98 loss campaign. There's much more competitive, there's much more competition this year, and a big reason is Tua Ski, which ranks second in the National League with a 347 batting average. He is third in the NL with 16 home runs and fourth in the RBIs with 51. So a big blow right there. And let's talk about how much of an impact this is going to make throughout the throughout the rest of the first half of the season as you see um if you if you're online and you can see the national league west standings the giants and the colorado rockies are tied are tied for second two and a half back of the arizona diamondbacks and that's that could be changed easily it could be now by by the time troy Tuliski comes back it can be a, a possibility that colorado can be down to fourth place and san diego can catch them san diego is only you know two and a half back of Colorado and San Francisco, and the Dodgers are only six back of Colorado. So in the next four or six weeks, you're missing about you know 25 to 30 games per se, and that's going to be rough as the Dodgers can come back. They're looking to do some work now as Yasmo Pugh is really doing well as a as a rookie hitter. San Diego could do anything. Their hitting is starting to get, catch up. San Francisco obviously is going to take Colorado and put them in third place by now, especially with the injuries with Tortoliski and along with Dexter Fowler, speedster, power hitter from center field, and then Cargo, who's been a very vital impact hitter along with Tortoliski in the Rockies lineup since their run in 2007. It just a lot of problems in Colorado involved with injuries and such. But hopefully the Colorado Rockies stick around in third. Um, it'll be it'll suck if you know this injury, this big injury to whiskey, costs them third place, also in fourth place, and it could actually cost them going down to last place. But you know, being at being two and a half back at Arizona, and you know, hopefully coming back with little damage with that with those standings, being probably five games below 500 when he comes back that'll help Colorado you know gain momentum hopefully when he comes back so the Giants are looking to do some damage they're on the road now they're beginning a three-game series against the Giants and Arizona starting a series against the San Diego Padres so the Padres could sweep the Diamondbacks and then anything could be and then anything could happen by this time San Diego could be in third place Colorado could be in fourth place Arizona could be in second place and the Giants could be in first so you guys can be in third place too. Anything can happen right now, and it depends on what goes on in the next in in the next weekend. Actually, anything could change in the NL West, especially since Arizona is taking on San Diego, San Francisco is taking on Atlanta, which is a disadvantage because Atlanta is amazing at home. They're 21 and seven, and the Giants are only 13 and 20 on the road. So a disadvantage with the Giants heading to Turner Field, especially ending the series. Any of the series on Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, tune into that game, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Sunday night. Um, you know, looking, anything can happen in the NLS, in my opinion. Speaking of the Giants, uh, Giants, Giants fan, Brian Stowe, who suffered the brain injury after beating at Dodger Stadium in 2011, has returned home after two years in hospitals and rehab centers. Brian Stowe's family said on his website Wednesday that Stowe will now live with them in the Santa Cruz area after spending about a year at the Center of Neural Skills in Bakersfield, a live-in rehab facility. The family said Stowe could have used more time at the center, but their insurances no longer will pay for it. So Stowe's parents and home, home nurses will give him the around-the-clock care he needs. Stowe, a former paramedic, was beaten in a parking lot at the, after the 2011 opening day game between the San Francisco Giants and the Los Angeles Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. Two Dodger fans are awaiting, are awaiting trial on charges in the beating, which sparked outrage and brought stadium security changes around the state and country. Stowe's family said the transition home has been hard. Brown requires, uh, this is, what they wrote, quote, Brian requires 24-hour nursing care, but this is not covered by insurance. So we had to hire caregivers in order to help Brian to get up and shower in the morning and getting dressed in bed in the evening, end quote. They said that while Stowe appears to be doing better, he has memory problems, pain, and stiffness. Stowe's family said that due to cuts in therapy coverage, Stowe has physically, ex uh, has physically experienced a big setback. They also wrote, uh, wrote this, quote, we do... Well, we can at home, but he needs the five days a week that he grew accustomed to. We just don't know how to get him, uh, to get that for him. 
end quote. Calls to the San Francisco Giants and Dodgers and the Los Angeles Dodgers were not immediately returned. A lawsuit by so against the Dodgers organization and then owner Frank Court is pending. Let's go to Pittsburgh. The same night, the Giants blanked the Pirates 10 to 0 offensive showcase for the Giants. The Pirates placed Ace AJ Burnett on the 15-day disabled list with a strained right cap and filled his wrong spot by activating right-hander Charlie Morton, who returns to the majors almost a year to the day after Tommy John surgery. Morton, who underwent the elbow the elbow reconstruction procedure last June 14th, will start Thursday night against the Giants. So, but unfortunately, he was barreled. Burnett was scheduled to start Friday against the Dodgers, but the 36-year-old notified manager Clint Hurdle after of the, clap, of the cap problem Wednesday. He is 4-5 and five this year with a 3.12 ERA and is second in the National League with 99 strikeouts. Jeff Locke will start Friday. The, Padre, the Pirates also released reliever Jose Contreras, who have been on the disabled list with lower back pain. Coaches have been uh, been chosen for the National League All-Star staff. Current Mets manager Terry Collins and former skip, uh, skipper for the Mets and current national skipper Davey Johnson have been selected as coaches for next month's All-Star game at City Field. Johnson, currently watching his skipper, as I said, managed the Mets to their last World Series title in 1986. They were picked Thursday by Giants uh, manager Bruce Bochy, the National League's manager, after uh, helping the Giants to a second Appearance in second ring in three years. Detroit's Jim Leland, the uh, the AL manager, also chose uh, chose mo- uh, coaches with Mets ties. Robin Ventura, the Chicago White Sox, and John Gibbons of the Toronto Blue Jays have been selected. Ventura played for the Mets last pennant uh, last pennant winner in 2000, and Gibbons is a former Mets player and minor league manager. The All Star Game is July 16th at City Field. On July 15th, the All Star Game in all such. We'll take one more commercial break. When we come back, we'll have news on a first-round pick signed with the Tigers. I'll give you a hint. His name is Jonathan Crawford, right-hander for the Florida game. So we'll give you a little bit of info about that. And then we'll wrap it up with the National League and American League standings. When we come back to the Stevens All Baseball Show here on Spreaker.com in affiliation with the National Sports Radio Station. Strano se la nullità si prenderà il gioco di noi, riempie già gli spazi tuoi, lo spazi di vertigine. Welcome back, Uprising by Muse, right there, to kick off the last part of the show. Steven Shaw Baseball Show here on June 14th at 154 in the West Coast, 454 in the East Coast. We're coming to 5 o'clock over there in the East Coast. Work is almost done, folks. And for the West Coast, well, you got another two, three hours. <laughs> but anyway, let's go straight back. Um, Tigers signed their first round pick from the from a couple weeks ago's draft. Uh, the right-hander out of the University of Florida, Jonathan Crawford. Crawford, the 20th overall pick in last year's first, uh, first year player draft, went 3-6 and six with a 3.84 ERA as, he, as a junior this spring with the Gators. The highlight of his college career came in 2012 when he tossed Florida's no, first no-hitter since 1991. Ranked the number 17 overall prospect at LOB.com entering the draft, Crawford also had success last summer on the international level. The 6'2 righty won 3 0 with a, 2-1-0, a 2.10 ERA in six outings with Team USA, earning Team USA's International Performance of the Year honors. In signing Crawford, the Tigers also now agree to terms with 19 other players taken in this year's draft. And lastly, before we go to the standings, um, news from a couple days ago George Contos, um, the reliever for the San Francisco Giants, and Bruce Bochy. Were suspended, uh, yes, uh, well, t- a couple days ago. George Conto suspended three games by Major League Baseball, one which he said he intentionally threw a pitch at Pittsburgh's Andrew McCutcheon, and then the MLB banned Bruce Bochy one game. Um, 
MLB senior VP Garagola made the decision Wednesday, a day after Contes was ejected from the Pirates' 8-2 win for hitting McCutcheon with a pitch in the eighth inning. A warning had been issued early in the game. Four batters were hit, including uh, Pittsburgh's Pedro Alvarez by Tim Linscombe and San Francisco's Gregor Blanco by Garrett Cole and Marco Scudero by Tony Watson. Contos was optioned Wednesday to Triple A Fresno and would serve the suspension only when he's back in the major leagues. If he files an appeal, the penalty will be delayed until after hearing a decision. Bochy was penalized for what MLB said was Contos' intention, intentional actions. He was to serve the suspension Wednesday night. Scudero is out indefinitely with an injury to this pinky on the left hand for being hit by Watson. X-rays were negative, but Scudero said Wednesday he had some ligament damage near the tip of his finger. Pardon me, guys. With the phone ringing in the background. American League East. I'll start with the standings, folks. Just wrap it up. Boston off, uh, is 41 and 27. They're two and a half um, up over the Baltimore Orioles, who are 30 and 29 in second place. Yankees, uh, six and four in the last 10, but getting slapped by the A's. Three games back, uh, the Red Sox. Tampa Bay Rays are only two games behind the Yankees for third and five games behind the Boston Red Sox for first. And the Toronto Blue Jays, 29-36, 10 and a half back in the first place. In the American League Central, the Detroit Tigers are 36-28, four and a half ahead of the Cleveland Indians, who are one game below 532-33. and 33. Kansas City is only a half a game behind Cleveland, 31-33, five games behind the Detroit Tigers. And then finishing out the AL Central, the Minnesota Twins, 29-34, six and a half back. And the Chicago White Sox, 28 and 35, seven and a half back. In the AL West, the surprising Oakland A's continue their 2012 success and and bring it over to 2013 as they're 41-27, the same record as the Boston Red Sox, surprisingly, and they're two games ahead of the Texas Rangers, who are 38 and 28 this year. For C- after that, it is pretty much downhill from there. Seattle, 29 and 38, 11 and a half back of the A's and nine and a half back of the Texas Rangers. The LA Angels 28-38, 10 games behind the second place Rangers, 12 back of the A's, and then Houston Astros 23-44, not a big concern for any first place or second place teams like Oakland and Texas, they're 17 and a half back, and they are a whopping 21 games below 500. Let's go to the National League, East, Atlanta is 39-27, they're 21-7 at home, bring, uh, hosting the Giants to start a three game series, wrapping up on Sunday Night Baseball. After that, five and a half back are the Nationals. The injury played Nationals are 33 and 32. Uh, they're 15 and 19 on the road. They'll need to get uh, that improved if they want to possibly make a run in the playoffs. After that, it was Phillies who are seven and a half back, 32 and 35. New York Mets are 12 and a half back, 24 and 37. And the Miami Marlins, the worst team in Major League Baseball, at 19 and 46. They're 19 and a half back on the Atlanta Braves. Uh, let's go to the uh, NL Central. The Cardinals, 34 and 23, 20 games above 500. They're three and a half ahead of the Cincinnati Reds, who are 40 and 27. After that goes Pittsburgh Pirates, four and a half, uh, four, four games back of the, of the St. Louis Cardinals, only game, uh, only half a game back of the Reds. Milwaukee Brewers are 15 and a half games behind the St. Louis Cardinals and 11 games below 500. Then it goes the Cubs, who are six games, uh, 16 games behind. The St. Louis Cardinals in 26 and 38. And to wrap up, like I said, in the NL West, it goes Arizona, San Francisco, Colorado, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening to CMU's All Baseball Show. I'll be doing another show on Sunday. On Sunday, on Sunday, on Sunday. It'll be a, good, it'll be a great show. I'll give you post-game coverage of the Giants and Braves Sunday night baseball game. I'll give you continued news, updates, analysis, and I'll have a guest on on Sunday. It'll probably be Robert Dieters. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, you know, Like my page on Facebook and get, uh, have a great afternoon, folks. Great fire, folks.